Hey, I'm telling you what, next Sunday, you understand, we're kicking off what's called the Holy... I'm going to let y'all say that. Hey, man, you're going to see a shift in power, a shift in a place, and a shift in purpose. You understand the, the Holy shifts about shifting from the Old Testament to the New. It's shifting that you don't have to go through a priest anymore. You can now go to the person, Jesus Christ. Amen. You're going to want to be here. I mean, I, hey, let's welcome Alexander Campus. Amen. Woo! Way to go, Alexandria. And, and Daryl, you can't have these Uggs. The reason they call them Uggs is because they ugly. Man, I tell you what, wouldn't the praise team knock the home run? Amen. Yeah. Not, not only in Pineville, but Alexandria did too. Way to go, Dustin. I mean, y'all are doing a great job over at Alexandria, Daryl, and and uh, adopt your daughters there with you, and Claudia. Yeah, y'all know next Sunday y'all get a free T-shirt, amen? And uh, you've got to be here to get one at both locations, so I want y'all to come and get a T-shirt and bring somebody with you. But the biggest thing I want you to do is have a shift in your life that you can experience a power in your life that you never have in your life. But today, you know, we're, we're going to be talking about uh, uh, problems, and uh, I want you to know I have problems, you got problems. We all got problems. But what you may not know, you ready? Here's a word from the Lord. That your problems are a simple matter in the hands of the Lord. See, what you see is real, real big. God says, hey, it, it, it's just a simple matter. See, so it's not only a simple matter in the hands of God. You may have a problem, but you may not know the biblical way to handle the problem that results in the power of God for him to handle the problem. I, I want to give you a, a verse, and then we're going to come back to it at the end and it's not in order but I want you to remember 2nd Kings 3 18 today and it says this and this is a what simple matter in the sight of the Lord what's a simple matter these people had this unbelievable problem they come down God starts telling them what to do and at the end of the problem God looks at them and he just says, says I want you to know something that's just a simple matter in the hands of the Lord so what I want you to know, no matter how big your problem looks today, I want you to know if you'll follow the plan that we're going to have laid out because it's God's plan today, God said, hey man, just a simple matter in the hands of the Lord. So what I want you to do today, we're going to find the problem, the plan, and then the power. So let's raise the bar on problems this morning. Second Kings, it starts in 2 Kings 3, 9, and it said, and so there are two armies, and they joined also by the troops of Edom. No, really, you're going to find out there's three kings, and they're all joined together. They moved along around about the route through the, what? Wilderness for seven days, but there was no water for the men or their pack animals. So what had happened is they were in this unbelievable situation. They heard the Moabite, Moab, was going to come after them and destroy them. So they said, what we'll do, we'll unite three kingdoms, and we'll get together, and maybe we can stand. But what they did not do is they didn't go to the Lord. They said, I, we're going to stand in our physical strength. And then they said, oh, no, can't believe that that's going to happen. Oh, what shall we do now that we're in a problem? Then we ain't even checked on it. This king of Israel cried out, the Lord has brought us here and to let the king of Moab defeat us. He said, man, that is the problem. So let's look at the problem. What was the problem? They were in the wilderness. Uh, you might be here today, and you might be in the wilderness of your life. The reason they were in the wilderness is because it wasn't because they did not prepare physically. It wasn't because they didn't have enough finances. It was because they didn't prepare spiritually. Because, see, we're going to all have problems. And we're going to all face unbelievable problems. And it doesn't matter at that point how physically able you're to handle the problem. It doesn't matter how financially you're able to handle the problem. If you're not spiritually able, it will drain, drain you to the point you feel like you're defeated and discouraged. See, the real reason they were in the wilderness because they were trying to fight the other king, Moab, with their own power, own strength, own power, own money, own resource. John 15, 5 says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abides in me... Uh, uh, and I and him can do all things, and he's going to bring forth much fruit. God says, listen, when you abide in me and I in you, I'm going to bring much fruit. I'm going to bring love and joy and peace and power. But without me, you can do nothing. You say, well, I've been doing a lot. Yeah, but you can do nothing that's going to further the kingdom of God when you're trying to do it on your own. So the first problem was, they were the first reason they had a problem, they were trying to do it without God. The second reason they were out of water, that because many times, you ready? Water is a type of the Holy Spirit. See, when, you, when you're trying to go through school, 
your relationships, your marriage, your work, your finance, your health, and you're trying to do it without water, you feel like you're in the wilderness and about to dry up and die. When you're trying to go without the Word, which empowers the Holy Spirit, you'll wear out easy. You'll, you'll get discouraged. You'll get defeated. You feel like you're drained all the time. You'll come on, just man, I just drained. I feel so discouraged. I'm so defeated. You know, at work, it just seems like it's a problem all the time. I mean, when I, when I come home, man, it's my wife, it's my kids, it's my husband. I'm just drained. It's because, see, you don't have the water. The, the Bible says be filled with the Holy Spirit. You, you don't have the Spirit and the power of God. Did you know that I have written in the, uh, in the front of my Bible, in, in Corinthians, it says, did you know I don't want you to be, uh, don't want you to miss the mystery of the incredible power that the Holy Spirit gives you when you're operating in your God-given gifts. In other words, so when you're really doing what God called, you might get physically tired, but you get spiritually excited. I can come up here and I say, man, I, I'm so physically out of shape and out of condition, but I mean, when the Holy Spirit comes, the Holy Spirit power, I'm more excited than I ever could be. I love to preach in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? But I want you to live that way. I want to be in your marriage, your finance, your health, every area of your life, because without it, you will wear out. Say, they had depended on their own words and own power instead of God's word and God's power. Hebrews 4, 12 says, the word of God is quick and it is powerful. The third problem they had, it was really bad, is we do it, I do it, we've all done it. They began to blame God for their problem. Verse 10 says this. It says, oh, what shall we do? The king of Israel cried out, as the Lord has brought us here to let the king of Moab defeat us. No, no, that, that's not, no, no, no. Romans 8, 37 says, we're more than conquerors through Christ. You know what, you got to, listen, this is real important. You got to stop seeing God as your problem, and you better start seeing him as your answer to the problem. See, they, they got themselves into this situation. They had never even asked God about what they should do, so they got themselves into it. Many times when people don't understand why they're having trouble, when they don't understand what they're going through, when they don't understand why this happened to them, they began to blame the only person that can help them, which is God. See, they, 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 they hadn't been serving the true and living God. To some extent, half, three-fourths of the, the kings and their people have been serving a false God. A false God is anything that you put before God, listen, that you think is going to give you what only God can. It can be money. There's nothing wrong with money if, if it's not your God, amen? Hobbies, nothing wrong with that. But if you're so busy with your money and so busy with your hobby that you can't come to church and you can't serve God, you're too busy. And you better be God, careful because God can slow you down, I promise you. It, it can be people that you're, you're trying to please people more than God. It can be pleasures. It, it can even be some of y'all not going to, but there's a new game called Fortnite, and man, it's everywhere. It, even it can't please you all the time. M many times the same people that are blaming God hadn't even been to church. They hadn't been under in the Word. They hadn't been under the Word, yet they're blaming the Word, which the Word became flesh, who is Jesus Christ. So see, they had three things. They started without asking God. Hmm. They had lack of the Holy Spirit in their life. Then they began to blame God. So let's see, see, because if you got a problem, you need a plan for the problem, amen? So let, let's look at the plan that, that God had for them. 2 Kings chapter 3, verse 11. But Joab, uh, Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, uh, and Judah and Israel still a type of God's people, even though Jehoshaphat had teamed up with the wrong people. And, but he said, isn't there a prophet of the Lord with us? In other words, isn't there somebody where we can get a word from God? Er, and I'm going to preach on a minute. What you need more than anything else, every single Sunday, every single day, every single problem you have, what you need more than anything else is a word from God. The word for God today is, listen, your problem is a simple matter in the hand of God. Amen? If so, can we find out what to do? Elijah is here. He's one of the kings of Israel's uh, officials replied, then he added, isn't he Elijah's assistant? Let me tell you what, I don't care who he is. If he can get a word from God, that's who I want to go here. Amen? And the prophet in that day was a type of, hey, that was, he, he, he dispersed God's word. 
fine, Jehoshaphat said. Hell, he's just the man we want. He's just the guy we're looking for. Hey, we've had all these problems. We've been defeated. We're out of water. Let's get a word from God. Wouldn't it have been nice if they had gone to God first? <laughs> Listen to this. And so the king of uh, Jehoshaphat, he said, let's do it. I, he, he said, listen, y'all ready? This is Elijah. They go to him and said, we've got all these problems. Look what he says. I don't want any part of you. I love it because, man, this is a my kind of man. <laughs> he said, man, y'all been living out there. You've been without God. You've been trying to do your whole thing. Now you say, oh, give me a word from God. He said, I don't want any part of you. And then he snares at him, and that really means he said, I don't want anything to do with you. But the king of Jordan, Israel, huh? thank goodness, he said, you've gone to false prophets and your fathers and your mothers, but now the king uh, replied, no, for it is the Lord who's called us here to be destroyed for the king of Moab. Well, really not. Verse 14 puts it this way. He said, I swear by the Lord God that I won't bother you <laughs> except for the presence of the king of Jehoshaphat of Judah. Let me stop. There's three kings together. The one king, Jehoshaphat, came. He was from Judah. He was a type of maybe a Christian that's been running around with the wrong people. Elijah, Elisha comes to them and said, listen to the other kings, I wouldn't even have time for you. I wouldn't even speak to you. I wouldn't even try to get a word from God. But listen, Jehoshaphat's with you. Can I tell you something real important? It does matter who surrounds you. It does matter who you go to when you have a problem. And it really matters what, what you do. Listen, you ready? Verse 15 sums it up. And he said, now bring me some, someone to play a, a, a flute or a harp or music. Joe said, listen, I am so ticked off. You need to bring somebody to start playing some music to me. And as the flute and the music play, a message of the Lord came to Elijah. You, you do understand what Elijah was doing. He said, I'm so ticked off. I'm so mad at you, king, because you've been blaming the true and living God, because you've been serving false gods, because you've been... You, you, you've been doing everything on your own <laughs> y'all got to bring play some music to calm me down that's exactly what he said many times it's the music that leads you to worship that gets you ready for the word of god see i don't care who you are i don't care where you go i don't, I don't care what kind of christian music it is i've gone to southern gospel i've gone to praise i've gone to modern when i'm sitting where you're sitting i'm not saying oh it's too loud i don't like it i'm saying oh god i want to come into your presence and i want to get ready to hear a word of god amen that's what I want you to do. That's what I want to do. That's why I came in early today. I said, man, God, I, I want to be in here and get ready to, to speak a word of God to the people, but I want them to be prepared to hear a word from God. Let music lead you, the right kind of music. <laughs> let Christian music lead you to worship God and let the worship lead you to the word of God. Because, see, if you don't allow it to lead you to the worship and then to the word, see, you have the worship, which is part of your emotion, and God loves your emotion, but you don't get the word, which calls you to walk straight. So you need the worship and you need the word. You know what the plan was? It says, man, the plan is you just need a word from the Lord. Elijah first reminded them why they got themselves into that in the first place. I, 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 he said, y'all been going to false prophets. I, I don't know what your problem is today. I do know one thing. The beginning to the answer to your problem is you need a word from God. You need to believe that your problem's a simple matter in the hands of God. Psalm 50, 15 says, Call upon the name of the Lord, time of trouble, and I will deliver you. Man, I, I just love the way Elijah addressed them. He said, well, I, he said, first of all, I'm going to tell you why you're having a problem. I love this because I've had people come to me all the time. We give an altar call, and I love you to come, and I love to pray with you, and I love to see lives transformed. But so many times you want to come and say, hey, pray with me. Give me a word from God. I don't want to admit my part. I don't want to repent from my sins. But Elijah said, hey, you don't want you to know. Elijah said, listen, the reason you're having this, he said, listen, it's because you've been serving false gods because you had not been coming to God. And, and, and even Jehoshaphat, listen, you've been running around with the wrong people. You've been trying to get people to help you win instead of coming to meet with God. But he says, nevertheless. Man, aren't you glad we got a nevertheless God? Aren't you glad we got a God? Nevertheless, I got myself into this problem. Nevertheless, he got it. I got myself into it. God's going to get me out. Amen? I love that. See, if you're in trouble and you got a problem, the number one thing you've got to do, you get a word from God no matter what it takes. 
So whatever you're going through today, if you're having this unbelievable problem, when I give the altar call, or maybe you don't have to come here, we're going to give an invitation where they can respond, right, Richie, from the paper too. And, and, but you say, hey, God, I, I need a word from you. If you're really listening, you probably already had a word from God. Because God's speaking to you. He's speaking to me. He really spoke to me about my problems are a simple matter in the hands of God. And I'm the one that make them big. And the reason they're so big to me is because I try to handle them. I do just like these other kings did. I go to the wrong places doing the wrong thing. And then when I'm finally out of energy and strength and power, then I go to God. Nevertheless. So first, you know, you you, you got to know that you got a problem. Second of all, you, you've got to admit you're part of the problem. you got to hear a word from God. you got to be willing to admit you're part of the problem. You know, James, I think it's James 5, 16, says, Confess your faults one to another that you might be healed. Some healing, some cure will never come until you confess your part of the problem. Third, maybe the most important thing you've got to learn today is, is to obey the word once you get it. By faith, listen, you ready? Obey God's word, even if it's hard, even if you don't understand it, even if you don't want to. 2 Kings 3, 16, we'll get to the really, really good part. It's all good. <laughs> and the Lord says, to fill these dry valleys with trenches, <laughs> to hold the water he will send. Or stop, just saying. <laughs> they had dry ground. And the word, when he says, another one says, start digging holes. He was saying, dig it, dig ditches. And, he, and, and verse 17 says, listen, uh, you're not going to see the wind or the rain, but the valley will be filled. In other words, they were in a valley and then it dried up. And he said, I want you to start digging. You dig the ditches. You, you dig the hole. When you do it, it's going to be filled. It's not going to be some natural thing. It's not going to be by water. It's not going to be by wind. But you yourself, you're going to see, I'm going to have more than enough. I'm not only going to give you what you need. I'm going to give you more than you need, not only for you, but for your animals. Before the water comes, you have to what? Dig. Y'all ready? Say this. Say, dig it. I like that. There used to be a word that people would say when they really liked something. They'd say, dig it. Now, this, this is a different kind of dig it, but it's a great, because this dig it is the one where you get the water and you get the power. See, in other words, you want the, the power of God upon your life? you got to dig. You want the Holy Spirit? You want to be filled with the power and the presence of God? Yeah, I would say, amen, I do. I, I, I would say, I want the power of God. You say, amen. I, I, mean, I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You say, amen. I, I want to answer to my problem. You say, amen. you got to dig. Yeah, you got to dig. Dig. So let me tell you what you don't dig. Don't dig up dirt on other people. Keep your mouth shut. Don't even dig up the dirt in your past. Confess it, forsake it, and forget it. And don't dig your, continue to dig yourself into a hole. But what do we do? How, how, can we, how can we dig down and hit the water? Well, the way that they were told, there, there was dry valleys, he said, dig down. Really, what do you say? Dig down until you hit the rock. And when you hit the rock, I'm going to fill the valley from bottom up, not top down. I'm going to do it where you know that it had to come from the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. I want you to know the rock is Jesus Christ. And where he says, the gates of hell shall not prevail. In Matthew 16, 18, he said, upon this rock, which is Jesus Christ, I will build my church, my life, my family, my finance, my marriage, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. So how do we dig down to the rock? You ready? Dig into God's Word. You got a problem, dig into God's Word. Hebrews 4.12 said, the word of God is quick and powerful. Dig into prayer. James 5.16 tells us, hey, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man does what? Availeth much. Dig into praise, even when you feel pitiful. Listen, enter into the gates with what? Thanksgiving. I hope you're thankful you're here today. Enter into the courts with what? Praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. See, what, what, what we do when we're having a problem, we start having a pity party. And God said, no, 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 get into the word, get into prayer, get into praise. In spite of that, we want to change our pity into a praise and come into the power of God. Are, are you, get into going to church every single Sunday, not once a month. You know why, why we only come once a month these days? Because we're too busy doing other things. We're in our hobbies and, and our pleasures and our finances. And we're going and we're doing and we're going and, and we're taking our kids. I hope I, hope I get into this team. I hope I get into this God. I hope they get into heaven. 
get into church. Hebrews says, don't forsake the assembling yourselves together as some of you have done. Dig into obeying God's word even when it's hard. Deuteronomy 28, 13, you know what it says? <laughs> Obey them. The Lord is going to make you the head, not the tail. You'll always be on top and never be on the bottom. You get into God's word, you pray, you praise, you come to church, you obey the word, you do what God's telling you to do. You, you, you know what, let me tell you some real important insight. You ready? You can be as close to God as you choose to be. You personally have to make a choice. You can't make it for your mate, you can't make it for your children, I can't make it for you, nobody, but you're as close to God as you choose to be. So it told you what you needed to, to start digging down, and some, now some trash you need to get rid of. Some of you have some places you need to stop going to. Some of you need to stop spending time with certain people. Some of you need to give up things that keep you away from church. You need to give up where you can really go up. Some of you are in a relationship and you need to break it off. Some of you need to get married or get, tell them to get out. <laughs> in fact, it's so much that I'm thinking about having a service, Tony, and I'm going to invite everybody that's living together. Hey, would y'all like to get married? And I'll just do one big service. Amen? I'm just saying. I'm serious. If that applies to you, sign up. Anyway, anyway hey, you might need to go to a person and ask for forgiveness. Amen? Because listen, after all the digging, you dig down to those things, you get rid of those things, the power and the presence of God is going to come. Second Kings, verse 17 and 18. Let's start summing it up. For thus says the Lord, you're not going to see the wind, you're not going to see the rain. In other words, you're not going to be able to say it rained, it just happened. You're not going to see the wind blew it over. No, no, no. Yet the valleys, they're going to be filled. They're going to be filled with water so that you, your cattle, your animals may drink. <laughs> you ready? My favorite verse of this week. I wrote it in the front of my Bible. It says, I want you to know, it said, this is just a simple matter in the sight of the Lord. Isn't that great? They had three kings, no water, they're in the wilderness, they're fixing to get slaughtered, and God's prophet comes to them and says, hey, that's just a simple matter in the hands of God. So I want you to know this, whatever you're going through, it's a simple matter in the hands of God. And when you do that, when you do that, when you start digging, when you start doing it again, I want you to start anticipating the power and presence of God coming into your life. I want you to do your part, and God will always do his part. Use what you have, not what you wish you had. You start digging, and God said, hey, guess what, I'm going to send the water. Some of y'all need to say, man, I've, I've been in the valley, I've been in the wilderness, I need to start digging, I need to start digging today. I'm going to make some commitments, I'm going to make some commitments, I'm going to get in the word, I'm going to begin to pray, I'm going to begin to praise, I'm, I'm going to come to church, I'm going to obey the word. God said, man, you're digging now, you're digging now, you're getting there. I'm going to stop doing some things, I'm going to give up some things where I can go up. And then God just starts impressing upon your heart through the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit your problem's not really a big deal in the hands of God. So as we begin to close, I want to ask you, do you have a problem that you need to give to God this morning? When I give the invitation, quit worrying about anybody else. I want you to know whether you're up there or down here, if you've got a problem, get ready to give it to God. I don't care if you're in Alexandria. I don't care if you're in Pineville. In a minute, when we, when we close, man, you just step out and give it to God. Are you ready for God's plan? Are you ready to hear a word from God? Are you, are you willing to admit your part? <laughs> and are you willing to obey no matter what it says? If those are the cases, you can begin, if you'll do those things, you begin to anticipate the power and presence of God in your problem. And you can just get in your spirit and God said, hey, that's just a simple matter in the hands of the Lord. Stand and let me pray with you. Father, I just thank you for your word. It is so powerful. It is so practical. God, we all have problems, but you already got a plan. You, 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 we got a problem, you got a plan, God, and you've got the power. I pray for every single person here today, God. I pray for those that came with a problem that they might experience your power. I pray that each one of us had a word from you today, God. I pray that it encourages us absolutely nothing too hard for God. I pray, God, as we do our part this morning and we come and we confess and we commit, God, that you would give us a new spirit, a new freedom, a new power, a new joy that surpasses all understanding. Now, God, the invitation is this. Come give your problem to God. 
and let him handle it because it's a simple matter. It's in Christ's name I pray.